my God, it's so gory, you guys. This might even be too gory for me. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Triana and this is Killer Dishes. On this channel, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make some kind of yummy little morsel or maybe a cocktail or a snack to give to your feral children when they come home from school like little savages. I'm also going to be telling you about an absolutely gruesome murder that is going to completely turn your stomach. So let's get into today's story. I'm coming at you today with yet another murder that I am adjacent to. I don't know how I find myself adjacent to so many true crime stories, but here we are again. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you about the gruesome Stanley Street Hollywood murders, and I'm going to be making Stanley Tucci's aglio e olio pasta. Aglio e olio. Basically, it means oil and garlic pasta. It's super easy to make. There's literally one, two, three, four, Five ingredients. I'd love it if you would subscribe and like leave a comment or like there's like a bell icon. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but like I think you're supposed to do it. So let's get on with it. Okay, so let me take you back. A few years ago, I lived on Stanley Street in Hollywood. And just to give you a reference, um, this is also the same area where Hugh Grant was um, caught with a prostitute in his car. And it's also just a few blocks where most recently Lady Gaga's dog walker got shot. So this neighborhood is really rich in history. Now, when I lived on this street, I had the cutest little dog and her name was Stella. She was like a four pound Yorkie. Shout out to Stella who lives with my BFF now. I digress. So I lived on Stanley Street and I had this little dog that I used to walk every day. And I became friends with this lady down the street that had the most adorable poodle and his name was Elvis. And so me and this lady, Carol, her name was, Carol and I used to walk up and down Stanley Street together every day walking our little dogs. And you know, we'd chat. At one point, you know, she was, she was kind of rambling and she mentioned sort of offhandedly, you know, my husband died. It's something that happened. It's, I live with it every day, but you know, I'm moving on with my life. And she said it like with, there was just something in her voice that was very sad and kind of cryptic. And I definitely got the idea that she did not want to discuss this. So I went home and obviously asked my housemate about it. And he asked me what house she lived in. And when I told him, he was like, he had seen a ghost. He was like, oh my God, you, you're friends with her? And I said, well, yeah, we walk our dogs together. We walk Stella and Elvis, her friends. And he says, Triana, something horrible happened to her. It was all over the neighborhood. And that is when I started working on the Stanley Street murders case. And when I say working on this case, I mean, I'm basically a detective. By the way, there's a cooking, great cooking tip that I just learned. If you just flatten out the garlic, maybe it'll the peel. Oh my God, look at that. It just peels right up. Mm, yeah. So don't. Garlic's kind of a pain in the butt to work with. I usually just use minced garlic, but that's not the way Stanley makes it. So I'm gonna try to be true to form. So this is what I have found out about the murderer. His name was Kevin Lee Graff. He was from Oregon, Oregon, and he was 27 years old. By all accounts, he was a normal guy before he left Oregon, Oregon. His family said that something happened to him in the military and he was never the same after that. They tried to get him help, but it didn't work. Now, did he actually go to therapy? Did he actually start taking medication? That is inconclusive, we don't know. But what we do know is that he was a changed man and not for the better when he left the military. Now, at this point, he had become homeless. He was a bit of a drifter. So he returned to the San Diego area because it was familiar grounds for him. So he's broke, he's out of a job, and now he's looking for his, his next chapter of his life. Well, he ends up in um, a very gay area of San Diego. People tell him that he could get a job as a go-go boy. Now, if you don't know what a go-go boy is, you, we probably don't know each other in real life, but I'll explain. Um, it's basically like a go-go dancer, but at a gay bar. So it's 
a young man that'll be dressed in like a little speedo or something and he's dancing on top of a box. So this is what Kevin was doing for money. Lo local lore says that he was a straight man and he was doing things that were gay for pay. He said that he was interested in women and he was just doing this for the money. Local lore, again, says that he was not only go-go dancing, but he was also escorting for men. Sometime later, some years later, he finds himself now in West Hollywood. And as you probably have heard, there is a very big gay scene in West Hollywood. So he becomes a fixture in the West Hollywood gay community where he continues um, go-go dancing and presumably escorting. On June 14th of 2004, Kevin Lee Graff finds himself at the home of Robert Lees. Now, Robert Lees was a 91-year-old man, okay? Imagine, this man was born in 1912. To give you an idea of what was happening in 1912, that is the year that the Titanic sank, okay? He wrote tons of very significant Hollywood productions. He wrote for like the really old shows like um, Laurel and Hardy, which you probably don't know about, but everybody's heard of Alfred Hitchcock. So this is where the Stanley Street Hollywood murders begins. Kevin Lee Graff shows up at the home of Robert Lees. It's 5 a.m. He walks into the front door. For some reason, Robert slept with the door unlocked in Hollywood in 2004, unheard of. Kevin makes his way into the bedroom and this is where the violent struggle begins. Kevin first rips a clock out of the wall. The clock is stopped at 5.13. So we know that this all started around 5 a.m. His cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. Kevin Lee grabbed these extremely heavy bookends and bashed Robert over the head until he was just bludgeoned to death. But Kevin wasn't done yet. He had more in him. He had more in him. He then took a knife, either that he brought with him or found in the house, and he cuts Robert Lee's head clean off. I mean, think about this just for a second. He has to saw through his spinal cord to get his head completely decapitated. And then, as if that wasn't gruesome enough, oh my God, it's so gory, you guys. This might even be too gory for me. He then gouges out Robert's eyes, scoops out the brain matter. He then takes his belt off, loops the belt through the throat and out of the eye socket, and then throws it over his shoulder like a handbag. Oh my God, Jesus, what was this guy on? He was on a murderous rampage, which he then followed up by leaving the house with the human head handbag over his shoulder, and hops the fence in the backyard into Dr. Morley Engelson's home, AKA my friend's husband, Carol, my dog walking friend. Her husband was home at this time, standing in his kitchen on the phone with Southwest Airlines making reservations for a trip. Can you imagine standing in your kitchen on the phone and seeing somebody walk in carrying a human head handbag over their shoulder? This is exactly what he saw. <sighs> Kevin beat Dr. Engelson to death with a fire poker. The dog, my little friend Elvis, the poodle, was in the house. He is kicking the dog. This is really ugly part, guys. Dr. Morley Engelson was then found with his pants down and around his ankles, his penis had been cut off, cut off, cut off, and stuffed into his mouth. Now I know why Carol, my dog walking friend, did not want to talk about her husband's death. So Kevin has mutilated Dr. Morley. He grabs his car keys, Dr. Morley's Mercedes, and he takes off like a bat out of hell. Oh, guys, this is a scene out of a freaking nightmare horror story. Oh, I am gonna roast this garlic and I've got my pasta started. The Southwest Airlines agent heard all of this and immediately called 911 and sent police to his house. They're investigating this murder. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fence, we've got Robert's girlfriend, 
Helen on her way over to pick up Robert to take him to the Beverly Hills Film Association Award where Robert is about to be honored for his work in Hollywood. So imagine it, this is what Helen thinks is about to be a wonderful evening where her partner of over 25 years is going to be honored for his work in Hollywood and she comes upon this absolutely gruesome scene where her partner is decapitated. So police arrive to Dr. Morley's house and they find the head of Robert Lee's thrown on the bed. Nice little parting gift that he left for them. When they get there, they realize now that they are investigating a double homicide. The murder of Robert Lee's and the murder of Dr. Morley Engelson. We don't want this to burn. We don't want this to burn. We want this to be ready at about the same time. Stanley said to do it like this, so I'm just doing what Mr. Tucci said. So once law enforcement realizes that they are looking for a suspect that has just committed this double homicide, they put out a live news conference and they show the photograph of Kevin Lee Graff. Two days later, there's a security guard at the Paramount Studios movie lot. This is all happening within a two mile radius. Imagine this security guard. He sees a homeless person outside of the gates. He catches his attention because this homeless person is making obscene gestures, he's talking to himself, he's screaming at cars going by. So they've got their eyes on this guy. While they're also watching this live news conference of this manhunt for a suspect in a double homicide, the security guard realizes that the man he's looking at right outside the Paramount Studios gate is the same man that he's seeing on the news that is being manhunted, to looked for. I, he's on the run, he's on the loose. He realizes that the guy is right there. So he calls police and says, um, I think I got your guy, and he is right outside of Paramount Studios. Whoa, you guys. Law enforcement races over to Paramount Studios where they arrest Kevin Lee Graff without incident He's carrying a Bible and a can of mace. We don't know where he got the Bible. We don't know where he got the can of mace. There is no doubt that Kevin is guilty. This poor woman too, like no wonder. And, but like, oh, why did she continue to live in this house? Kevin Lee Graff is arrested. He is charged. He is found guilty and he is sentenced to life in prison without parole. And that concludes the gruesome and heinous Stanley Street Hollywood murders. I am going to enjoy this Stanley Tucci pasta aioli e aglio, pasta aglio e aioli, one or the other, whichever. If you decide to make this dish and you like it, let me know in the comments below. If you don't like it, take it up with Stanley Tucci. And by the way, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Triana Lask at, no, no, it's not. It's at Triana Lask. Yes, that is correct. Thank you so much for coming to my kitchen. Thank you for joining me. I'd like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, who is my husband, who helped me renovate this kitchen. He will never watch any of my videos because he absolutely hates true crime, poor thing. But I thank you for coming. I'm gonna enjoy my Stanley Tucci pasta and I'm gonna go work on my next case. So I'll see you next time on Killer Dishes.